It is 11 a.m. here in London. It's 1 p.m. in Kampala. I'm Monita Rajpal at the Olympic Park. You're watching World One. First for today, for the first time since the opening ceremony, cheers are reverberating around the Olympic Stadium behind me as the track and field competitions get underway. Within the last hour, Jessica Ennis, the poster girl for the host nation, began her quest for gold in the heptathlon. A week into the competition, Here's a look now at the medals board. China and the United States have 18 gold medals apiece, but China is still top of the table thanks to a higher number of silver medals. That's 11 to date. The U.S., though, has three more medals in total. Great Britain has jumped to fifth on the table with five gold medals. Michael Phelps is aiming to make more Olympic history today. The Baltimore Bullet is trying to become the only swimmer to win two individual events in three successive Olympic Games. Phelps will uh, swim the 100-meter butterfly today, and on Saturday, his last race before retiring will be the 4-by-100-meter relay. In just a moment, we'll get the very latest uh, from Zane with the full rundown on today's track and field action, and uh, what a day it's going to be, Zaney. It's going to be fantastic. For the first time, finally, that stadium is going to be packed with thousands of spectators and the athletes in there, too. You've got the women's heptathlon, hepta, Greek for seven, so yeah. they're going to compete at seven events, like the long jump, the 800 meters, javelin, shot put, and uh, so we're going to keep our eye on that. Then there is the men's shot put today as well, mm -hmm. and then the 10,000 meter women's races, and of course, there are three Kenyans running in that Monita, oh. and, you know, my loyalty has to lie there. Team Kenya for you. <laughs> yeah. Although you wouldn't be able to tell with your shoes. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't find that. Uh, I here. couldn't find better ones. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. We've got the Team GB flag all over. But all right, we'll have more of that from you a little bit, little bit later on. Nice to see you. Thanks for that, Zadie. Now, before we get into all of that, we want to come back to Jessica Ennis. And we mentioned her just now. And athletics fans in the UK have very high hopes of her winning gold. And we can talk now to Mick Thompson in Sheffield in England. He is Ennis's uh, former coach and introduced the future star to the sport when she was a child. Thank you so much for being with us. We just saw her race there. She made a world record just moments ago. First of all, your thoughts. Uh, yeah, it was a very impressive start. And I know Jess support of words there and good advice there from former coach there, Mick Thompson. We appreciate your time here. Thank you very much. Of course, a lot of eyes, all eyes in this nation will be on her uh, this weekend. Now, a contestant in the women's judo tournament just made history by becoming the first Saudi woman ever to compete in these Olympic Games. But 16-year-old uh, Wajdan uh, Shaherkani's uh, debut was uh, short-lived in less than two minutes. Um, it's history making in itself. That was the big deal, and there was so much drama around this, Monita. I mean, she almost didn't compete because of the issue of the hijab, but finally there was a resolution, and she wore that swimming cap kind of an attire uh, to, because that's what the Saudis wanted. But yeah, less than two minutes, mm. and boom, she was out. I mean, you know, let's just be honest. Yeah. Your highlight of the game so far? Well, a clear favorite, obviously, <laughs> has been the opening ceremony. Yeah. But I think that amazing race last night between Michael Phelps yes, and Ryan Lotte, you know, yeah. that was tremendous to watch. Welcome yeah. back. The UN General Assembly is set to convene uh, this Friday, one day after Kofi Annan quit a special envoy to Syria. Annan blames the failure of his peace plan in part on what he called a clear lack of of unity at the mm -hmm. situation all around in Syria. Mohammed Jamjoun has been uh, watching the situation closely from here in Abu Dhabi. He joins us now live. And Mohammed, let's start with the situation in Hama today. I'm June there, live comes from CNN Abu Dhabi. Well, newspapers are uh, weighing in on this, and let's take you to the United Arab Emirates. And the Nationals' headline is, Anan resigns and blames the UN for name-calling, not helping. It says, with the resignation of Mr. Anan, the likelihood of any negotiated outcome to fighting that uh, has, uh, by some estimates, uh, claimed more than 20,000 lives has receded even further in britain the in europe's long-running struggle to beat its debt crisis thursday had been billed as a moment we might just see a breakthrough investors wanted to see radical action but right now from the european central bank instead it sketched out a plan that's been described as underwhelming vague and lacking immediate action. Bank President Mario Draghi said the ECB might buy government debt from Spain and Italy to bring down their 
cost of borrowing, but after Draghi's speech, uh, borrowing costs for Spain and Italy surged and stock markets recoiled. So has Draghi fulfilled his pledge to do whatever it takes for the euro? We're joined now by Nina DeSantis live at CNN uh, London. And Nina, this is supposed to be the big z bazooka, but it seems as though the markets didn't li like it. What was it about this that they didn't like? It was one of those special types of bazookas, it seems, Manita, which actually fires backwards. Right. And Nina, thank you very much. Nina DeSantos there at CNN London. This is World One, live from London. He and the running sensation Oscar Pistorius will compete in the Olympics for the first time tomorrow. He is the double amputee, nicknamed Blade Runner. And Saturday's qualifying heats for the men's 400 meters will be like none have ever been. A true watershed moment for legions of disabled athletes. Well, the amazing achievements of Oscar Pistorius have won him followers all over the world. Robin Kerner recently sat down with uh, one of his biggest fans, his grandmother, Gertie. And Robin joins us now live from uh, CNN Johannesburg. Robin. Hi there. Well, of course, most of the athletes have their family there watching in London. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, uh, Robin, thank you very much for that. Robin Kerner reporting to us there live from Johannesburg. You are watching World One live from London's Olympic Park. Up Assembly next. discussion comes just today after former, former UN Chief uh, Kofi Annan abandoned his efforts to end the conflict. Some had called it mission impossible right from the start. Richard Roth reports the help wanted sign is up again at UN headquarters. The search is on for a successor to Kofi Annan. A Saudi Arabian teenager has entered the Olympic history books by becoming the first Saudi woman ever to compete at the Games. But Wajdan Shaharkani's debut was short-lived. In less than two minutes, the 16-year-old was defeated by Melissa Mojica of Puerto Rico. Our fears that prison inmates may soon be the next victims of the Ebola outbreak gripping parts of Uganda. Sixteen people have died from the virus so far and another 30 may have contracted the deadly illness. Joins us now from Kibali in Uganda, where the virus was first detected. And we should say he is the only Western correspondent in the infected zone. David. All right, uh, David, thank you very much for that. David McKenzie reporting to us there live from Kibali in Uganda. You are watching World One live from London. One man and more gold medals. Welcome and back to World One live from the Olympic Park in East London. We've been hearing cheers reverberate through the Olympic Stadium behind me, and that's because the athletics is underway. Amanda Davis joins us now with more details. It really is a fantastic atmosphere here today, isn't it? It's expected to be double the number of people who've been in the park than, than any other day, and it's great to hear. We even get, them using it. even get a little sneak preview of the screens yeah. behind us to, to see what's going on. It's, it's all going on, frankly. The crowds are lively, and Britain's poster girl Jessica Ennis has got off to a brilliant start, running a world's best time in the opening event of the hand. Oh. Tell you what, the newspapers in the States today have got to be seriously thick because they've got <laughs> so many medals and so many incredible stories yeah, to be great talking about. sections there for yeah. the papers. All right, Amanda, thank you very much yeah. for that. So you are watching World One live from Olympic Park. So how many calories do you think? Yeah, a lot of movement there, a lot of movement on your lap as well. <laughs> this one of the souvenirs, a lucky souvenir that you got. Nobody does. Meet Wenlock. <laughs> this is the official souvenir <laughs> and the most popular one. This is a guy that has uh, a little podium up here to represent gold, silver, bronze. And then uh, <laughs> the five Olympic rings and the friendship rings and the bangles here. And then also the eye, which is a one eye, where actually the Wenlock structures all around London yeah. have video cameras in them. And they're just taking pictures of all the you tourists. The dance, <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome back to become an Olympian, it takes a lot of dedication, practice, and of course a lot of food. Yeah, athletes like swimmer Michael Phelps, they eat something like, Monita, get, get this, 10,000 calories a day. So we wondered, what does 10,000 calories of food look like? Monita, you would know, right? I that, would you every that every day. morning You've before the show. You shared it with me. Don't, don't pretend. <laughs> we sent Phil Hahn to find out. Now, the average person needs to only consume about 2,000 calories a day. But what if you were Olympic champion Michael Phelps? Well, he needs to eat about 10,000 calories worth of food every single day. Now, if you're wondering what 10,000 calories looks like when it comes to breakfast, this is what we've got here. This is a typical Michael Phelps breakfast, apparently. He's got, he, t he has uh, grits, chocolate chip pancakes, French toast, omelette, cup of coffee. 
another cup of coffee and some bread, some uh, tomatoes, lettuce, and their fried eggs in between all the sandwiches here. I don't think this is enough when you <laughs> think of a guy, frankly. For us. You know, and you know what's funny? Ryan Lockie also gave an interview, and he said, he, you know, when he can, he just wants to eat McDonald's. So what happened to the health uh, side of everything? He's a man out of my own heart. <laughs> Well, maybe Michael Phelps will be having this and more because he's competing today in the 100 meter uh, butterfly final. So maybe he'll get another gold medal. I just don't know how he puts it all down. Well, of course, you know, there's the food and the weather's going to be nice enough to eat it outdoors. <laughs> so we want to see, of course, a lot of the information, well, a lot of the, the events are going to be at uh, the uh, Olympic Stadium behind mm -hmm. me, the track and field events. If you hear that sound there, the helicopter out there obviously trying to get shots of what's happening inside. But, of course, a lot of it's determined by the weather, Mr. Tom Sater. That's right. To cooperate. Well, it's, uh, the helicopter sound is a good thing. That means that you don't have the storms in the area. So uh, a little bit more in the way of cloud cover than sunshine. But let's talk about it. As soon as we got one area of low pressure in and out of the region, here comes the... Yeah, well, hopefully we can. All right, Tom, thank you very much for that. And that is it for this edition of World One, live from the Olympic Park. I'm Juanita Rosco. And I'm Zane Bertie. Thanks so much for watching. We'll give you an update to the news headlines in a couple of minutes. Stay with CNN and with Wenlock. <laughs>